the skunk. I would not have left the comfort of my home beneath the vestibule of the convent if it were not for the pleas of my gnawing stomach. The accursed snow had reduced my soul to a murky pool of shiftless sediment, grinding my tread down to a lethargic waddle and dissolving my directionless mind into a morass of meaningless chatter. Instead of terrorizing the nearby beehive or scavenging nests for eggs, I chose the path of least resistance by raiding the neighbor's dumpster. I looked for you through the tall, arched windows of the monastery while passing through the courtyard on my way to the parking lot of the Italian restaurant next door, but all the lights were out. A crackhead in search of recyclables ran away from me in terror when I reached my destination. Even the rats disembarked. Normally these reactions gave my entrances a certain notoriety precipitating a defiant chuckle on my behalf but uh, tonight it only reinforced the loneliness that i've been suffering throughout the mortifying winter while begrudgingly gleaning the dumpster's contents of salvageable nour nourishment i had the distinct feeling that i was being watched squinting i glanced around the rear of the eating establishment under the styling star-studded night where I dined, <clears throat> my suspicion was confirmed when I saw the glassy yellow orbs of an owl hovering in the shadows of the branches of a tree located in the brush bordering the property. Knowing I had blown his cover, the owl let out a sigh. Half of him was annoyed that I'd spotted him. The other half uh, was relieved. Perhaps he was also having a rough night and needed a break from the stringent rules governing, governing the animal kingdom on the night shift. What's up, skunk? he asked. It had been months since any other animal had openly acknowledged me without tearing off in the opposite direction a second later. I took a chance and opened up to him. Not a whole hell of a lot, Al, I told him, a half-eaten garlic knot in my paw. To be perfectly honest, I'm so depressed, I'm ready to jump in front of oncoming traffic at the sight of the next pair of headlights. That would be a waste, he responded sullenly. Sympathy was a sentiment of which I had never been the recipient. Coming from a bird of prey, it was altogether revelatory. I tested him to see how much further he would go. Would it truly be a waste, I asked him. After all, everybody hates me. The bums won't give me the time of day, and they smell worse than I do. I'm targeted as this, this pesky stink bomb, but I'm actually quite clean. I spend a lot of time grooming myself in my burrow. You can tell just by looking at my coat, see? The colors are monochromatic, but they're, they're never dingy or, or ruffled, and I'm well manicured. I only whip out the big guns in an emergency, but everyone treats me like a pariah. The priest just tried to poison me. I would have taken the bait if his dogs didn't find the tainted food first. Serves them right to have uh, taken the fall. Those dumb dogs thought they were on a sacred mission to defend that woman's honor just because I got fresh with her one day. You're still hung up on that lady skunk? Al asked with a grin of surprise. Well, she has similar markings as, as as me, I stammered evasively when you became the topic of the conversation. I like how she showcases her black and whites. There's something about how she... You skunks just can't get the hint, can you? She's a nun, for Christ's sake. She doesn't want to have anything to do with you. you have better, you'd have better luck hitting on a penguin. It's not that you're, 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 you're a different species. You have no sense of healthy boundaries, skunk. You can't just go lifting up your tail at everyone every time you, you feel rejected or threatened. It's beyond inappropriate. It's outright obscene. What, what's it going to take for you to realize that she's terrified of you? She wants you to leave her alone. She'd be shouting from the rooftops with glee 
if uh, she were to find out that the priest had finally expunged you from underneath their chapel. I see, I see those two going in and out of the rectory all the time. If, if I had the same game as that priest, maybe Father David is only attracted to little boys. So you have nothing to worry about there. Not to get your hopes up, of course. You're delusional if you haven't figured out that Sister Kiki hates you. You are vermin to her. You make her skin crawl. She spread an entire bag of mothballs all over the grounds last week to get rid of you. She stank up the entire back block, all in the name of your eradication. Wake up and smell the camphor skunk. But I'm lonely, Al. Is love such a crime? Look, Al Reason. You're a skunk. Skunks are solitary creatures, particularly male skunks. Uh, you're best to accept your perpetual bachelorhood. Love is over overrated anyway. What I have to offer you is far better than love. I offer you death. Death encompasses love with all its majesty. It is far more endearing. Your demise is an author, offer of love to me. By offering yourself to me through death, you will be granting life to me and my young so that we may thrive in the crisp air under the moaning moon of another season. It is the greatest contribution to the life force that you will ever give. Forget love, skunk. Choose death. Wait a second, Al, I stated. My charcoal black nose had become speckled with tiny piles of snow at this juncture. A stinging breeze tickled the nape of my neck. If it wasn't cold enough, these words of yours have, have sent a chill through my bones. I don't, I don't want to die without having known love. Death is the highest embodiment of love. By sacrificing yourself to me, you will be making the ultimate gesture of love. Tell you what, he continued. I respect you, skunk. You got heart. I assure you that I will make this as quick and painless as possible. The owl stayed true to his promise.